So, two COVID vaccines, no antibodies. Does that mean zero protection from COVID? Not really. Hey there lovely people, welcome to the video. Let's get straight into this. I have no antibodies after having two AstraZeneca COVID vaccine jab. Now I know that there's quite a lot of you out there in the same boat as me taking immune suppressant tablets and you've had your, your first and second COVID vaccine jab and you're thinking, right, I can return my life back to normal or normal-ish at least and I can start doing things that I've missed out doing over the last one and a half years. But it's not gonna be as easy as that guys, I'm afraid because even though I've had my two AstraZeneca vaccine jabs, like I said, I've produced no antibodies at all. So just to kind of show you how this looks like on your phone when you're reading it through your patient viewer and how I had it explained to me at the time, is that you're looking for a number between seven and a thousand. I can't remember what the unit of measurement was, uh, but that's not too important because what's more important is a thousand is like your most maximum protected. You've produced lots of antibodies. Seven or less than seven means that you haven't produced any because it's not been picked up in your blood results. My test back, uh, my test came back and as you can see here, I literally had less than seven detected in my bloodstream, which means I don't have any antibodies. But like I said, guys, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not protected and I will get more into that uh, as the video goes on. But as you can see, I didn't produce any antibodies after two AstraZeneca vaccines and it's been a long time since my second. And they always said that, you know, two to three weeks after your second is when your body produces the antibodies and when you're most protected. Not for me, I'm afraid. And it's going to be the same case for most of us out there who are taking uh, immune suppressant tablets as well, unfortunately. So why is this the case, guys? Why is it that I've had two AstraZeneca vaccines and I've produced no antibodies? Well, the main reason for this is that I take immune suppressant tablets. So I take tablets to suppress my immune system, to make it weaker so that it can uh, control, so I can control my kidney transplant that I got back in December 2018. And these tablets are simply making my immune system so weak it had no reaction to the vaccine i was i wasn't able to produce antibodies the uh, microphenolate uh, mmf that i take and the adiport uh, tacrolimus that i take it simply just dampened my immune system too much to the point where it was unable to interact with the vaccine and produce antibodies uh, to help fight away covid after getting the result of my uh, antibody test showing that i was negative for antibodies uh, I asked my doctor, you know, what kind of is the next step for patients like me, and this is what he said. Well, it's something that we have seen in some of the uh, in some of the, the trauma patients. Obviously, that's why we are we as a local yeah. community of nephrologists and transplantologists. We are thinking that probably you guys should be a uh, candidate for three doses okay but it's something that we cannot do before obviously the government it's approved higher up of course yes. yeah so is it's that some, is it's that something that does happen and and you have to be very careful then and you don't obviously have a clue when we may get a third no, jab or anything no, like that no it's something that we are considering and we will support this yeah. obviously but it's not something that we can start doing so as you heard it has happened to, you know, not just me, it has happened to quite a lot of people taking immune suppressants, maybe a lot of people who've had uh, transplants in particular. Uh, it's not something that was a surprise or a shock, especially to my doctor. He said that, you know, it was kind of predicted that if you suppress your immune system, you know, it may not be able to fight off uh, COVID and it may not be able to produce any antibodies even from the vaccine. And as you also heard, there may be something that we can do in the near distant future about this uh, lack of antibody production. And I'll get more into that as well later on in this video. But for now, I think that, you know, we should definitely keep safe, wearing our masks, washing our hands, uh, social distancing, staying outside, meeting people outside when we can. I think we should just be doing the same things that we've been doing over the last uh, 18 months just to keep ourselves as protected as possible. Because the fact is that even though it's quite disheartening that, yes, I haven't produced antibodies, I know that there are some people that have um, produced antibodies, even though they're taking the same medication as me. It's still a case of we need to protect ourselves, guys. We can't just give up and just get tired of looking after ourselves. I mean, if we ever got tired of looking after ourselves, we wouldn't be in a very good state because that's something we have to do all the time as transplant patients. And I don't know about you, but I'm personally going to keep socially distancing, wearing masks and doing all the other things that I've said that we're gonna be doing. I know that the vaccine should produce up to 90% protection for uh, people who aren't clinically extremely vulnerable and 
that means the general population. So that's a good thing if the people around us are getting vaccines. But for us personally, make the decision and just look after yourself. And you may think that, you know, other people taking the vaccine around you may not have that much of an effect on you, but it really does guys. And the fact that this vaccine has been proven to protect up to 90% is absolutely fantastic. I think I may have mentioned in a previous video that the flu vaccine that we all take every year protects people who aren't clinically extremely vulnerable only up to 40%. It's just one of those things that even if we were able to produce antibodies, we still won't be as highly protected as everybody else. But if everyone around us has 90% plus effective uh, protection, that's a great thing guys. And it should be something that we advocate and something that we talk to people about who are around us just to make sure that they do go and get their vaccine if they can. So guys, what happens next? What are we going to have to do so that we are protected from COVID? Because it's gonna be part of our life for a long, long time from now on and we can't just keep walking around looking after ourselves. We need to be protected. Are we going to be getting a third vaccine jab maybe? That's what my doctor thinks will happen. That's what he's advocated. And that's what he says if the government put forward that my hospital trust will also agree to that. And I do think that's something that will start to happen. Recently, very recently in the news, uh, the government have announced that there will be a program of booster jabs leading up to the winter to protect those most vulnerable. This is on the government website at the moment on uh, gov.co.uk. And here you can see it says that the JCVI, the Joint Committee for Vaccinations and Immunizations, they've said that they are advising a third booster jab uh, is offered and uh, they should be offered in two stages. Uh, stage one, is to uh, any adults aged uh, 16 and over who are immune compromised. That is literally bullet point one, number one, top of the list. That's me. And that's most of us here who have had uh, transplants and anyone else taking immune suppressants that are stopping their body from producing COVID vaccine antibodies. Uh, anyone else in this uh, stage one uh, group, you can see those living in a residential home, uh, anyone over the age of 70 and adults who are also uh, considered clinically extremely vulnerable. So I fit into lots of those groups and hopefully this uh, third booster jab option does go ahead because I do feel like it's something that we would need. So as you can see, this is a an idea that is quite far along now. It's been advised by, like I said, the Joint Committee for Vaccinations and Immunizations, and normally they advise, the government take their advice very seriously and what they do say normally does uh, come to fruition, it does start to happen. And another option that I've been reading about recently that's been in the news is that they are thinking of offering a third vaccine booster jab as well, but using the opposite vaccine to what was given to you at the start of your immunization. So I had two Oxford Astra AstraZeneca jabs, so I would theoretically be offered the Pfizer vaccine to see if that does anything for my body and see if it can produce antibodies as well. And this study, as you can see, has been reported across the news outlets in here in the UK. Uh, here on the BBC, you can see that uh, it talks about this being as a trial, a trial that has been done and it says uh, the trial results also hint that people who have already received two doses of AstraZeneca vaccine could have a stronger immune uh, response if they were given a different jab as a booster if recommended in the autumn. So this is lots of things coming together. This is whether A, they're going to recommend and actually put forward having a third booster jab and then B, whether they think this third booster jab will be the same that we had before or a different one because this trial did show that it increased the production of antibodies when they've been given a different uh, a different jab to begin with. So that's two things that might happen next. Two things that might help us to be protected a bit more. Two things that might help us be more protected during the winter, which is what uh, the government are really stressing about at the moment. And I would say that the third thing that we can do and the third thing that it won't be implemented by the government, I'm pretty sure of this, is just to keep shielding guys. And that is not easy. It's not easy because uh, people have to go to work, people have to make a living, people have to live their life, people have to enjoy themselves. So I would just say shield when you can, you know, stay inside when you can, follow the same rules that you've been following for the last 18 months when you can, because you being protected is more important than anything else. And my advice to you, uh, especially as a kidney transplant patient, there'll be more specific websites for other people who've had other transplants, but go and find uh, Kidney Care UK guidelines, uh, Kidney Research UK, guidelines and just follow what they are recommending. Uh, Kidney Care UK guidelines are fantastic. They are updated, I think it's almost every week, maybe every month, and they're continuously telling you that you should be doing this or you should be doing that, or this is changing and that's changing. And I would definitely log onto there and just read what's being said and follow that advice as best as possible. Right, so the last thing I wanna move on to, I think it's the last thing, 
is something I've been hinting at throughout the whole video and it's that not having antibodies doesn't mean you're not protected from COVID. Let me explain a bit more to you. So protection and immunization from a virus comes in two forms. It comes in the form of antibodies, which we all know about a lot recently, and it comes in the form of T cells as well. So antibodies are used to stop a virus from entering our body. They protect us from even catching the virus. T cells help our bodies once we've caught the virus. It helps to fight off the infection. So even though my antibody test came back as negative, it doesn't mean that I'm not protected from a T cell uh, point of view. I may have produced T cells that are ready and able to fight off COVID if and when I catch it. And what that means is if I do catch COVID, I may not be hospitalized because of it. I may be able to fight it off uh, myself uh, without needing to go to hospital because my T cells are ready and active to fight them off. So my symptoms may not be as, as bad. They may be a bit more mild. And that is the whole premise of this vaccine doing its job for the general population as well. And it's why we've seen so many people not going into hospital recently. Even though the, the cases are rising, the number of people going into hospital are falling. And that's simply because that they are now able to fight off COVID more regularly by themselves without needing hospital treatment. So to explain a bit more further about how antibodies and T cells are being used to fight off COVID, and how probably having antibody tests is completely worthless right now, which is what I've just recently learned. An antibody test is only probably beneficial if you think you've had COVID and you just want to see if you've produced antibodies after having COVID. If you're getting checked to see whether you've produced antibodies after your vaccine, it's pretty much pointless. And that's what I recently learned when I was watching and I attended a webinar uh, hosted by Kidney Care UK and lots of other kidney research, uh, lots of other kidney charities, including Kidney Research UK and lots of other um, health physicians and lots of other people around the UK. It was a fantastic webinar. I learned so much from it. And in there, they explained further, as I'm going to show you now, the difference between kind of wanting antibody tests and why there's no point having one. I'd say a couple of things about that. The, 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 I guess the headline uses that I wouldn't recommend. Uh, you know, paying for or buying um, a test in, in the private sector or uh, trying to source anything um, yourself. Two main reasons. The first is that there are lots of different tests. Not all the tests are the same and the tests might tell you different things. So some of the antibody tests at the minute might tell you that you've had a had COVID in the past, but not whether you've made antibodies following the vaccine. Some tell you whether you've made antibodies following the vaccine. The test might just give you a yes, no answer, like you've got antibodies or you don't. They might actually give you a level and the levels don't all correlate between the different tests. So there are lots of technical issues about the tests that make it very difficult to recommend getting a test unless you know lots about, about the test. Um, and as I said, th th there are lots of different tests that might not give you useful information. The second main thing that I would say then is that, um, as, as Michelle alluded to, immunity isn't straightforward. And um, there are different aspects of the immune system one big bunch being antibodies, the other being T cell mediated immunity. And we measure antibodies a lot because they're quite easy technically to measure, but they're not the full story. And so we don't really know what a positive antibody test means or what level of antibodies might be protective. So as I said, there's kind of really no point getting a, an antibody test at the moment because it only really shows you whether you've had COVID in the past and you've produced antibodies in that sense. It may not always show you whether you've produced antibodies from a vaccine, because you may have produced T cell protection and that doesn't show you anything about T cells on your antibody test. And as of yet, there's no generic, easy to come by T cell test to see whether you've produced T cells. There is a T cell test that was mentioned during the webinar. And uh, as you can see here, it's not very common. It's a T cell test that's uh, produced in Harley Street here in London. And it's not well known yet. It probably costs a fortune if you really want to get tested for it. And it's something that I hope that they will start to do uh, more for the general public as the weeks and months go on. Right guys, that is all for me in this video. Quite a long one today, full of different information. I hope that you found it uh, helpful because reading all of this stuff, finding where the correct information is and all the research that I've done away from the camera has helped me a lot. So I just wanted to give you a tiny bit of information into the world that I've been living over the last few weeks, just making sure that I'm reading up on the right things. I look forward to all the different research that's coming out from Kidney Research UK and all the other kidney foundations to see exactly how we can move forward from this. And guys, if you ask me today, should you go get a vaccine? Yes, go get a vaccine. And if they say, do you want a third one? Yes, go get a third one. Because at the end of the day, I trust scientists. I trust scientists more than I trust politicians and the clinical trial companies. It's the scientists who are making these decisions. So please follow the correct advice, look after yourselves, 
Stay safe and stay strong and tune into the next video to see what else we can discuss. See you then guys. This is why I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> Damn hat hair. Let's put that back on.